wherever you are. All right. One, two, three. Welcome back to the Finding Moments podcast. My name is Wong Lam, and today's very special guest, 20 plus years in the United States Air Force, 20 plus years and counting right now for the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, and he's also served with Oklahoma National Guard, Lieutenant Lusardo. Welcome to the podcast, sir. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. First of all, thank you so much for your services to our great country, our great state, our city. We appreciate you, thank sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Before we get started, there's a note that we wrote for you, not to okay. read it out loud, but that's just a personal note. Okay. I don't have my glasses with me, but I can almost make it out here. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Cool. And then we also have some swag for you. Here's a shirt. Sweet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely be sporting that. <laughs> and then, of course, the DM hat. Yeah. Awesome. Very good. Thank you. Oh, and a handcrafted people. mug for you. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. I have to put my coffee in that yeah. every day. Thank Your you. Scars and stripes. Yes, for sure. And I got you a little something. <laughs> oh, man. Got you an OHP patch and an OHP mug. This is awesome. Love it. Cool. The swag exchange. Yes. I like it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. How's your day been? So far, so good. Yeah. Why? Good. Yeah. She's busy uh, managing the house build. So <laughs> we're almost done. Yeah. And it's a customer service thing. You know, we don't want a bad rap when I put this uniform on. I'm representing the state of Oklahoma, yeah. and I don't want some out-of-state person that I stopped to go on back home and say, man, the highway patrol, they're so unprofessional and nasty and mean. I, I don't want that. Right. Yeah. Well, the easiest way to even eliminate any misconceptions or perceptions of the highway patrol is don't break the laws, I guess. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> yes. And they talk about overcrowding of the, the jails and my thought is, and it, it sounds pretty simple, and it may not be as simple, but literally just just abide and be respectful of the law, and I think it should, it'll be a lot easier. That pretty way. simple concept, you yeah. think? Yeah, well, I'm pretty simple-minded, so I. it's almost like today I asked my wife, I was like, what would you make great again? And she's like, make kindness great again. I was like, yeah, that's good. And for me, I was thinking, let's, let's make common sense great again. Yeah. That's, that's missing. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it, yeah, we get so emotionally wrapped up on social media and the corporate environment that we just think we know everything. Yes. And we sit back and take the emotion side out of it and yep. distance ourselves a little, just Absolutely. a little bit. True. Yeah. What are a couple of questions that you wish people would ask lieutenant, but no one ever asked? Um. So a lot, you know, most of the time people, when they see you, they're like, I didn't do it. But <laughs> yeah, it's, that's, that gets a little old, but you know, you know, come up and ask me, Hey, why did you want to do what you wanted to do? You know, just, I've wanted to do this since I was about eight years old. Yeah. You know, not just be a, I just wanted to be a police officer until I got pulled over by an Oklahoma trooper for speeding. <laughs> and that's when I said, that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be like that trooper. Mm. Um, I, he the way he presented himself, the uniform, you know, the the professionalism. I said, "There's no way I'm going to be a city cop. I want to be a trooper." Mm. Um, when I was growing up, about eight years old, my dad's good friend was a police police officer for our little small town, and he would come over and you know, on just hang out and eat dinner and stuff. And I said, "Man, I just admired him. Was you know, just wanted to be like him." So that was one of my goals as, as, you know, as early as eight years old is to be a police officer. Wow. So eight years old and then you got pulled over. What are some moments in your life that maybe I call them the finding moments that led you to become law enforcement, military? Uh, when I, growing up, I was a terrible student. I, I had focus issues. I just wasn't, I, I hated school. I mean, this is going to come full circle here. Yeah. Uh, I hated school, uh, just didn't want to go, didn't like to study, uh, graduated. I went one semester of college. We lived right across the street from a state university in New York and went half a semester and quit. And my parents said, what are you going to do? And I said, I think I'm going to join the Air Force. Uh, I enlisted, 
Uh, first plane ride was going to basic training in San Antonio. This is back in 1986, um, dating myself. Um, joined the military and the craziest thing, which it just is funny how stuff works out. My first assignment after basic training and my technical training was to go to Upper Hayford, England. And I didn't want to go overseas yet, mm -hmm. you know. And so I swapped with somebody and came to Tinker. Wow. So it's funny, you know, where would I be now if had I gone to England? Uh, and I mean, would I have, you know, two kids be married for 30 years and have this job? I've never been, I would never been an Oklahoma trooper had mm -hmm. I went to England. Um, as, as I got into the military, uh, I knew I wanted to, after I got that stop, I, you know, I asked him a bunch of questions, you know, what do you got to do to be a trooper? And, you know, you got to have college. So I started taking college classes and I got shipped overseas and spent three years there and got enough college credits to get on the patrol. And I got off active duty in 1997 and went right into the guard. And during that time, I applied at the highway patrol uh, and ended up getting hired at the Capitol patrol. Uh, spent three years there and then got accepted to their academy in 2001. Um, so, I mean, that's how it all started. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, eventually I went on to get my bachelor's degree and then a master's degree and graduated with honors. Here's a kid that hated school. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'm a college professor, too, yep. which is insane. I never imagined <laughs> I would be standing in front of a classroom teaching students yeah and and that is very rewarding yeah giving back because you're talking about the servant leadership mindset yes yeah giving back and and teaching and i knew that you're i was going to allude to your professor as well but you brought that up that's awesome how do you enjoy teaching it is a blast because i have these young minds that are paying to come to school to learn and i'm getting to pass all my knowledge that i have learned over 20 plus years onto them. I teach the introduction to criminal justice or law enforcement mm -hmm. and report writing. And what is really neat is I get to bring in my videos, traffic stops, pursuits, stuff like that. And I share that with them and they're so engaged. And there's times where I have to play the video over again because they want to see it again. Yeah. And the report writing is based on some of my reports, uh -huh. some of my pursuits and stuff. So I get very high marks from my students. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool to see them just hanging on every word. Yeah. And I, I had this one kid last year that really made me feel good. Uh, football player. Uh, he was an African-American kid. He was big, about 6'5", three, 300 pounds. Said, this is my favorite class. I look forward to coming to this class every week. That's awesome. I mean, it just it makes you feel like, man, I'm making a difference. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I was actually nominated for Excellence in Teaching Award this last semester. Nice. I didn't get chosen, but I thought yeah. that was pretty cool that, yeah, somebody, to get nominated? That, that somebody said, hey, this guy's doing a pretty good job. Yeah. You know, I thought it was neat. Yeah, that, that, that is neat. I mean, I, I feel unaccomplished sitting here across from you, sir, <laughs> oh, to be quite honest with you. It's, uh, it's amazing. That's, that's why I'm so appreciative of the time that you have or you're giving our podcast. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. Like, oh, this is great. Oh, this is awesome for me. So I definitely appreciate it. It's another level. You talk about pursuits. What's maybe two pursuits that you had that was the most exciting for you? Uh, probably there was one that happened New Year's Eve. It was when they first, the old cross, the new cross town was being built. So I was on an overtime shift at I-40 and Penn on the new highway that was totally not being used. And uh, Trooper Gary Hightower got into pursuit of a uh, Monte Carlo SS coming westbound on the uh, cross town, the old cross town. And mind you, this is like one o'clock in the morning after New Year's. So it's, you know, people have been drinking and, you know, traffic is pretty heavy. Uh, I get on the, the on-ramp at uh, Penn and Hightower comes by and he executes a TVI, which is tactical vehicle intervention, spins the car out, he bounces off the wall and this kid turns around and goes into oncoming traffic. So he's going eastbound and the westbound. Me being a younger trooper, and I wouldn't do it now, uh, follow him into oncoming traffic. Uh, I believe my driving abilities are pretty darn good. Um, my wife didn't think so. Uh, she, I got chewed out. Uh, he gets off the first exit, you know, at Agnew, and goes north on, Ag on Agnew up to his villa uh, and goes over these tracks. 
the railroad tracks. And as he did that, I said on the radio, he's going to crash. And his car started fish talon, lost control. He rolled and then he vaulted end over end. And as he did that, I could see him come out the window oh. and he landed upside down in a church parking lot. And this was a 17-year-old kid, stole his parents' car, uh, and the, the, the noise caused the pastor that lived in the church, it was an older female, she came out and said, is there an earthquake? Oh. And it, I'm, I'm not kidding, that car came about two to three feet from hitting that building. Wow. So, and Jeez. then, I mean, my next probably best one was uh, Norman PD was in pursuit of an armed robber. Uh, carjacked a vehicle. Uh, we were eating lunch at the Casino Domino at 59th and Western, and the call came out, and it was a rainy day. Uh, I was actually a lieutenant at the time, and they were coming up Shields from South Moore, and I got, I came up to Shields, and they were in a field on the west side of Shields, and I was just driving around trying to think, you know, where, where, where's the bad guy going to go? And I said, if I was a bad guy, I'd get back out on the main street. So I sat right at you know, a, a side street, and this dude came right out in front of me. I became the lead unit, and he I was trying to TBI him, and he was trying to hit my vehicle, and he would go into oncoming traffic. This was lunchtime. Oh, man. Uh, he turned down a side street, and the funniest thing is, as when we turned down the side street, he threw an empty gas can out the window to try to hit my vehicle. Um <laughs> Like I've said before, my driving ability is pretty advanced. Um, and as we, I was trying to TVI him, he would, you know, he's trying to hit me and he's running the red lights and eventually went back into oncoming traffic. And I said, man, this guy's going to kill somebody. I've got to end this. And he made the mistake of turning back west onto 29th Street and I executed a TVI. Mm. Another trooper pinned him. And as I was getting out of my car with my guns drawn, this guy got loose and he was coming right at me and I was about to squeeze off around uh, because deadly force, he's going to run me over. I jumped out of the way and got back in my car and a couple of troopers had bumped him and de deactivated his fuel cutoff, which is uh, he was driving a Ford. Yeah. Uh, he took off running. Don't ask me why, but he stripped his t-shirt off and then the Norman canine jumped on him. And oh. when I got up there, he was still biting holes in him. Oh, so, oh, oh. So that was a pretty exciting chase that lasted a while. Oh my so gosh. Those are two of the probably the most vivid and I share those in my class at mm -hmm. Rose. So Wow. Pretty cool. Man. Exciting. Yeah. Adrenaline <laughs> yeah. big time. And we didn't get any of those when I was with that Trooper Flores. So. Oh, that's too bad because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sign up again. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Pursuits are I mean they're they're adrenalines. Yeah. It's a general definitely adrenaline rush. Yeah. What are, what are the two biggest excuses when you pull someone over? I wasn't paying attention. Fair. You yes. know, yeah. uh, or I'm not familiar with this area. Mm. You know, I'll stop somebody, you know, if they run a stoplight or a stop sign, and they'll say, I'm just not familiar with this area. And I'll say, well, where you're from, stop signs are the same shape and size. And, you know, unless you're from a foreign country, right? Like Japan, they're triangle. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, as you were saying that, I was thinking, I think they're the same in Oklahoma as they are in Texas or yeah. New Mexico. Yeah. I would but imagine. It's the main excuse is I'm not, I was, just wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so you're distracted driving. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of distracted driving, cell phone use with just people and driving, do you see a lot of that? A lot. Yeah. And I'll look and they'll throw that phone or, you know, just there. It seems like I see more of them when I'm in my personal vehicle mm. and they'll just sit there and drive and weaving all over the road. But when I do catch somebody, I stop them and I write them a ticket because everybody knows it's against the law. Yeah. Uh, you can drive 55 miles an hour. And if you take your eye off the road for three seconds, you're driving the length of a football field. I mean, a lot can happen yeah. in a hundred yards, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're on a city street, a kid can run out in front, a dog. Yeah. I mean, it's deadly. We've lost a trooper because of somebody paying attention to their phone and not watching the road. So. Yeah. I, I honestly, honest with you, Ted, I, I, I'm paranoid when I'm even walking on a sidewalk. Yes. Because even in the neighborhood and down here, yeah. just 25 miles an hour, there's cars booking it 35, yes. 40. 
everybody's in a hurry. Yeah. And it's a, it's all about me world, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. So it's just starting to kind of trend towards uh, too many distractions. Everybody's in a hurry. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about motorsports earlier, or I mean, your driving abilities. Do you have a favorite motorsport? Uh, I'll, I'll watch NASCAR every once in a while. I love NASCAR. Yeah. I should, I miss my calling. Yeah. I, I, I think I could have been a pretty good NASCAR driver. Oh yeah? Yeah. Up there with uh, Jeff Gordon and yes. uh, Martin Truex right yes. now? I like to drive fast. Yeah? Yeah. You've been to Texas Motor Speedway watching NASCAR yet? I never have. I've been by it a few times. Okay. But, but yeah, I, I, I would love to get in one of those cars and see what I can do in one of those cars. Man, they, I think you can do that, right? I think you can pay. Yeah, I'm sure I, it's not I cheap. It's, I but, think it's a pretty nice coin. But yeah, it, it'd be yeah. fun to do. Yeah. I, I just have, I just seem like I got that sixth sense about driving and winning the race. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't like to lose. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's good. I don't like to lose out of it. But I've been to NASCAR in Texas Motor Speedway. It's amazing. Adrenaline rush, yeah. watching the pit crew. Oh, it's, yeah. Phew. We have a speedway in my hometown. It's super modified uh, cars. Okay. And, I mean, there's some named people, you know, back in the day when I went. Yeah. So every Saturday night, they would, oh, darn, my phone's oh, right. that's okay. I'll cancel it. Sorry. No, that's all right. You got to take that? <laughs> nope. Okay. I didn't recognize the number. <laughs> okay. That's fair. That's fair. But you're talking about super modified in your hometown. Mm -hmm. These recognizable NASCAR drivers or uh, racers? I, I, there was uh, Jeff Bodine. Yeah. He yeah. he raced there. I'm trying to think of some of some others. I mean, this is back in, you know, the early 80s when mm -hmm. I would go, you know, in high school time. But, yeah, it's a, it's a big deal at home. Yeah. Was it a... Um, I was, I was about to say Tom Petty, but Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever raced there, but yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty cool. It's a big sellout every weekend. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Maybe you should go to take out NASCAR for a spin. <laughs> In Vegas, I think he can. That'd be fun. That'd be awesome. I yeah. think he can take street cars out too, like Lamborghinis and oh, Ferraris. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be real cool. What are a couple things that people don't know about Lieutenant? Uh, that I'm not a true Okie. I'm from upstate New York. Uh, as soon as I turned 18, I hit the road. Never looked back. Never looked back. Um, huh? See what else. I've, I've been married to the same woman for 30 years. Yeah. Which is an accomplishment nowadays. That's huge. That's <laughs> awesome. I'm, those are marriage goals for me. Yeah, that's pretty so that's cool. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. What a. What do you think about leadership? to you how do how do, how does leadership feel to you and what does it mean to you you're a lieutenant so yes i think uh as i've been through the military and my time on the highway patrol uh i like to lead from the front i would never do some give somebody a task that i wouldn't do myself mm. um, when i worked uh, at the field troop at troop a as a supervisor i would be out there working accidents right alongside my troopers um last year i worked 50 collisions just being assigned to the training division wow i'm out there helping those guys whenever they need it uh so and i think that goes a long way with the guys with the troopers mm -hmm. um i you know i feel like they they appreciate what i do i'm not out there trying to you know earn want them to like me i'm just out there because i remember as a trooper in rainstorms working accidents and hearing lieutenants go off duty on the radio i'm like man that's just wrong mm. but I feel like, you know, I want to be in the trenches with my guys and just show, showing the way, leading the way. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sit there and say, you need to do this, this. I want to say, hey, this is the way we're going to do it. Follow me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what leadership is. Yeah. I think. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I, I can appreciate that because I, I like my leaders to be able to have more compassion and, and understand what we're going through. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that way we can become better off at the and long one skill that a good leader needs is to be a good listener. You have to listen to your people. Don't sit there and try to be thinking what you're going to say next. Listen to what they got to say, process it, and then give them some feedback. Because if you don't know your people and listen to what they, their problems are, then you're going to have real problems. Mm -hmm. it's, they're just going to multiply. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to be a good listener to be a good leader. That's great stuff. Have you ever had a trooper want to resign and then maybe you just listen to the trooper and then they decided, well, they never resigned? 
I haven't had that, but during the academy, mm. I've had, you know, cadets that would want to quit and I've talked to them and, you know, one that was really wanting to quit, we talked to him for a while and he ended up staying and he's, he's a trooper. I mean, he's been on for a couple of years now. Yeah. So it's all about, you know, hearing what they got to say and trying to, I don't know, just understand what they're trying to tell you, but say, Hey, this is the way, you know, this is what you're going to get if you stick with it. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is, like I said, this is a fun job. It's a great job. It's, yeah. and it's stable. You know, I know I'm going to get a check every month. Yeah. Um, and I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm overpaid, which yeah. people wouldn't probably believe me, but yeah. we were paid well. Yeah. I mean, I can use a raise and everything, but, <laughs> but we, we, we get paid pretty good for what we do. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. What's a physical training like for OHP and then how does that compare to the Air Force? When I went in in the Air Force in 1986, basic training, I was in the best shape of my life. I played ice hockey growing up. So my cardio and, you know, stuff like that was great. When I got to basic training back and we only PT three times a day or three times a week. And I'm like, this is it. <laughs> so that was, but now, now they do things different. They mm -hmm. have the army, they adopted the army PT standards and, uh, they do things a little bit different now. I mean, we touched a rifle one time, one day in air force basic training back in the eighties. That was cold war time. Mm -hmm. Now the tempo and the, you know, the has changed and, they do like a war week and all that stuff. But now compared to the highway patrol and the physical standards, I mean, I tell people it's the Marine Corps boot camp on steroids. Wow. So, I mean. For OHP? Yes. Our, our academy is difficult. Like I said, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah. Uh, we have a method to everything that we do in our academy. Uh, our physical standards, uh, our PT program is second to none. Uh, we, when I went through, we did a lot of running distance running. Now it's all CrossFit. Mm. We, we came out losing weight. These guys are coming out, putting muscle on. Uh, so nice. very, very intense physical training. If you show up not out of shape, you're not going to make it. Yeah. You just can't show up with the minimum standard of passing the PT test and expect to make it through our Academy. Mm. Uh, you have to be in the, even when you think you're in shape, when you show up, you're not going to be in our shape that we want you in. Wow. And we're not, you can't say, well, the highway patrol is going to get me in shape. No, you're going to get in better shape, but you need to be able to keep up. Yeah. If, if you lag behind, they're going to know it and you're going to have to do a little bit of extra stuff. Yeah. That, you know, we call smoking. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, our, our physical program, and it's all about teaching to stay alive and how to stay in the fight, mm -hmm. you know, never give up never quit. Mm, I like it. That's really good stuff. Yeah. It, it sounds like you're able to tell an overachiever versus someone who's like, eh, absolutely. I do baseline stuff. A minimalist. Minimalist. That's what I call that's it. That's right. Okay. There Cause you go. I have minimalist students uh -huh. and then I've got overachievers. Mm -hmm. So that's, and it's pretty much with everything in life. Yeah. You can, you spot them and then you put pressure on them and they, most people usually leave. So mm, the one that do the bare minimum. Yes. Yeah. We want the guys that want this. They yeah. want, they got to have it in the heart and in their mind. Yeah. You know, if you're here physically and mentally, you're going to make it. Yeah. If, if you got one and not the other, there's, you're going to be tipped to one side and it, you got to have a balance. Yeah. No, that's true. Do you, you have any female cadets? We have two right now and okay. they're sticking with it. Nice. Yes. Good for them. Yes. They, uh, we started with four. Okay. Uh, four or five. And then these two, I think, are going to do well. As long as they stay healthy. That's great. We need them because we only have about 12 females on the whole wow. agency. So wow. we, we need them. Man, I, it, it, what do you think it, that might be? Is it, because I, I don't know for females to join OHP or the Marine Corps or the Air Force or anything like that. So I, just, I don't know if it's like a mindset or... And it's not for... It's not because of lack of recruiting because right. Lieutenant Philippi goes out and tries to get yeah. these females. She's awesome. Uh, yes. And then we just, it's hard to get minority candidates mm -hmm. and females. Yeah. It's just, we're so, the lack of, I mean, we're just, there's no diversity on mm -hmm. our agency and it's mm -hmm. not due to lack of trying. Right. Uh, it's just hard to recruit them. Yeah. No, I, it's I just overall, it's hard to recruit period nowadays. Yeah. Because of our, you know, past stuff with you know law enforcement, but uh, it's not as competitive as it used to be. Yeah, no, I think that's a very fair uh, statement and assessment. What you talk about the 
diversity. It's not like you're not recruiting. It's just that, let's say you, I just talk about myself. A lot of Asian women aren't trying to be in law enforcement or military, uh -huh. right? It's just, I don't know really of any of them. And it's not because they're being discriminated against, it's just because they're not applying. Right. Just not interested yeah. or just, yeah. yeah. So I get it. It's just kind of like you, you don't see a lot of um, Asian guys playing American football. Yeah. There's just not a lot of interest. Right. And that's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, I was just wondering about, yeah. about that. So. Now, my daughter went, when she went to Oklahoma City's Academy, she, they started with 24 females. Wow. And they finished with, I believe, 14. A couple got washed back due yeah. to injuries. Okay. So they'll start the next school. But yeah. I mean, they got 14 females that are. That's pretty good. good. Yeah, that's, that, yeah. That's a good number. Yep. And she earned it. I mean, during her DT week, she got beat up pretty good. I'm sure. But I, I'm glad she did because she needed to learn how to get hit and how to fight. Yeah. So, yeah, they train them well. They got yeah. a good academy too. Yeah. I'm not knocking them because I've seen it firsthand. Mm -hmm. Her coming home every night and sore and tired. And so, yeah. Oh, man. What's the differences between, let's say, your jurisdiction as a high patrolman versus Oklahoma City, Moore, Norman, Edmonds, something like that? So our jurisdictions, we can go anywhere. Okay. Statewide jurisdiction. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, Oklahoma City, they're just stuck to city limits. The city PDs are stuck to their specific city. Okay. So like when I worked metro if i wanted to go down to cleveland county i could just go down there and work or mm -hmm. mclean county or lincoln county because troop a is pot potawatomie county lincoln county canadian county logan county mclean county cleveland county and oklahoma county that's oh, all man. one troop okay so i mean if we want to work any of those areas or if we have training say down in ardmore and we want to stop cars on the way down there we can so i mean we can go anywhere wow I, I see OHP even on the city streets here and mm -hmm. more. Yep. You know, just driving around and yep. which makes sense now because at the time I didn't know, but when I went on the ride along with Trooper Flores, we were working shields. Yeah. A lot in that. It's a busy place. It, Target rich it, environment. <laughs> it is. You guys were on Live PD. Yes. I think it was last fall or last, 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 sum, last summer. Last summer. Yeah. 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 Yep. How was that? I think our agency heads weren't too excited about it but i thought it was really cool mm -hmm. watching our guys i mean a lot of them that i trained were on there yeah uh trooper perkins trooper bunch uh trooper smith uh trooper kinsler i trained all those guys yeah, yeah. trooper kinsler yeah 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 so it was neat seeing those guys yeah. on there and i mean it was pretty cool yeah but i don't know if we'll ever go back on there i just mm -hmm. i i thought it was positive mm -hmm. Uh, but I, it just seemed like, you know, social media, of course, is going to pick things apart and you got your social media warriors out there and yeah. lawyers. And yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was neat. I liked it. Yeah. That's interesting. You, you, so you said lawyers another day where I was thinking about what happened with society as far as we had to put labels on a coffee thing because it says, oh, it's caution because it's hot because someone sued. And now it's like we... We're, people are getting sued for everything, so it makes people paranoid. Mm -hmm. Other people are like, oh man, I want to get sued, and it's it's kind of an unfortunate thing. And same with social media, it's yeah. where they're nitpicking people or nitpicking every little thing, but they're not out there fighting the fight. Right. And so, if you're going to nitpick, it's like coming to a meeting and not having a solution for something that you don't agree with. Right. I think what's scary is our media and social media causes people in our line of work to second guess split second decisions mm -hmm. and that'll get us killed. Uh, yeah. you got these armchair quarterbacks saying, man, I can't believe he shot that guy. Well, there was a gun laying by him after he was shot or, uh, there was a news clip that I use in my class on discretion mm -hmm. where a, uh, guy it's he was a like an, a community leader or whatever that was bashing the police for a shooting so this department and put this guy with a journalist through this training drill where you know he was the police officer with a you know a gun it was a semunition like you know just a little paint pellet type deal and the bad guy was sitting there working on a car and the guy was like hey what are you doing blah 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 and the guy jumped out and shot him 
And he didn't even have time to think. And he's like, wow, you guys really do have tough decisions. I mean, it was kind of like, it came full circle. He was like, wow, yeah, okay, I was wrong. He kind of mm. had to say, eat a, little, eat a little crow, so to speak, yeah. that, you know, people really don't know what, how fast we have to think. You know, our goal is to go home every night, you know, and I'm not saying that we're right 100% of the time, but most of the time our training kicks in and we have to make split second decisions. Mm -hmm. And I mean, those that do make the wrong decisions, I mean, they get punished and they have to live with that decision, but yeah. at least they're alive. Yeah. I mean, we've seen a lot of bad shoots, but the majority are good shoots. Mm -hmm. And I mean, thank God I've never had to take a life. Right. I hope I never have to. Right. That's another thing that people think that we want to go out and just shoot people. Yeah. That's the last thing I want to do. But if I have to do it to go home to my family, I will. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes, it, it makes perfect sense. As the split second decisions comes with just the territory, the training, the experience when you're out there patrolling and you're just, like I said, you're not out there to put people in jail. You want to help out as much as you can. Yes. But for me at the same time, I've got to help myself to help my law enforcement. Yes. So I've got to be a law abiding citizen. How about yes. that? <laughs> That's true. If you're sitting in my chair interviewing yourself, what are a couple of questions you would ask yourself? Hmm. First one would be like, where do you see yourself in five years? That was one of my questions. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> All right, Lieutenant. Great minds think alike. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you answer that? Um, I have, I started my 23rd year. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to reevaluate changing careers in two years once I hit that 25th threshold. Okay. Um, should I get promoted to captain, I'm definitely staying. Mm -hmm. uh, if things in two years, if I, I think I'm probably going to get transferred at the end of this academy, which is good because I've been in training five years. Okay. Um, should I like that assignment? I'll stay, but I do keep my options open. Uh, I think that I would like to try something different. This has been a great career. I know when I do retire, not having that patrol car in my driveway is going to be a big change. Yeah. And I mean, my wife always tells me that I change when I put my uniform on. I'm like a different, I'm, I get regimented and I'm ready to go to work. I mean, when I go on duty, I'm out the door. Yeah. You know, I'm ready to go. Um, but I think in those five years, I could be retired mm. uh, and start another career. Okay. I mean, I'd like to try something different. That's uh, awesome. I mean, I've been wearing a uniform for since 1986 yeah. between the Air Force and Highway Patrol. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to wear some dress shoes maybe <laughs> instead of some boots. So we'll see what happens. That's awesome. I, if you, when you wear dress shoes, wear Kohan makes some really nice dress yeah? shoes. Cool. So. Okay. <laughs> I do dress up when I go teach at Rose. So, yeah. Uh, so, I, you know. What do you think about that? Transitioning to become a full-time professor? I've, I've meddled in that. Uh, I was actually offered to be the, the criminal justice head over there at Rose State. Wow. Uh, it would be a pay cut. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's an option. Yeah. Uh, I think that would be pretty neat. Yeah. My daughter's a full-time professor over there, and she likes it. Wow. Uh, she teaches early childhood development. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, see what happens. Man, yeah, because you talked about giving back and you're a part-time professor now and you really enjoy it and kids really enjoy that. Yeah. Plus you got experience and you're charismatic about your persona, so it makes it a lot easier yeah. to, to it, learn. It's really fun to be in front of the class. Yeah. I was the shy guy that never raised his hand in school, mm. you know, and now I'm standing in front, you know, passing on my knowledge. Yeah. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. You talked about your wife saying that you're more regimented once you get the uniform on. What's that switch in your mindset? Um, when just, I guess from just the academy life and me in the military, it's, I got to just, I put my, my guard goes up a lot when I put this uniform on. Yeah. I put this on, I'm ready to go. I don't like to sit around the house. I just get up and I, and I'm ready to roll. Um, you know, I probably go from a, the color code, you know, I go from probably a yellow orange to a red when I put this uniform on. Heads on a swivel at the gas stations, you know, I'm out 
I'm in a marked unit, I'm a target. Mm. But at the same time, I'm representing the state. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's different. And she even has rode with me before. And when I'm talking to people, my voice changes, she says. <laughs> so I don't see it, but that's what she says. I bet you it does. So, yeah. yeah. I haven't had a chance to have dinner with you outside of your uniform yet. So when the time comes, I'll, I'll let you know. Sorry. That's, okay. the blood, that's the blood bank one, some blood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you donate? Do you donate? I do. Okay. Yep. Saving lives yep. with your blood too. Yep. Man, this guy's all about American freedom. <laughs> Patriotic. Yeah, you talk about bleeding red. We all bleed red, but you're you you serve. I love my country. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yep. You got any morning habits that get you started in your day? Coffee, first thing. What kind of coffee? Scars and stripes. Why? Uh, <laughs> why? Because it is a veteran-based company that. Uh, it, you know, it, it lets the uh, the veteran become uh, invested into this company where you can get a profit. Mm -hmm. uh, it it uh, the guy that ch started it, Chad Watts, uh, wanted to give back to military. Um, I think this program, it's it's man, it's just an incredible program he started, uh, where it brings all these guys, veterans, females too, mm -hmm. uh, together. Uh, we've got squad leaders that check up on all of us to make sure, you know, because we, you know, a lot of us have PTSD. Yeah. Uh, guys have issues. Uh, just they, they're just like wellness checks every week and like kind of accountability partners. And, uh, you know, we, which I'm not a salesman by no means, but right. the coffee sells itself. Yep. Uh, it is very good coffee. Um, like I said, whenever we sell a bag, 20% goes back to us. I think yeah. it's cool. Uh, I keep the coffee in my office where people can come in and buy it. I got a regular, one of the guys in my hallway, he buys it all the time. So, uh, and it's great tasting. It it's is very, very good. good coffee. So I agree. The first time I had it was in your office, yes. actually. Yes. And I had about three cups. Yes. It was just that good. You don't have to add nothing to it. No. It's that good. It's, it's, it's smooth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you start off with coffee yep. for your, when your habits. Coffee. Mm -hmm. Bathroom shower, yeah. You know, get ready, shave, and get ready. I'll have my breakfast. Uh -huh. As I'm you know, eating my breakfast, I'll turn on my work computer and check my emails, and yeah. I'll go on duty and hit the road. Pack my lunch. I don't eat out that much. Every once in a while, yeah. But I'll eat in my office. Yeah. When you say you don't go out to eat, when you do go out to eat, or if you're out in public, do you feel a a presence like such as man, people are like staring at me or. Oh, whenever we walk into a restaurant, all eyes are on us. Yeah. Uh, and then people want to come up and talk to us, which is cool. Yeah. You know, just, and you know, we're, we're, it's public relations. You know, mm -hmm. People want to come up and thank us for our service, which makes us feel good. I mean, there's times where people will pay for our meals. That's awesome. And it's an anonymous deal too, most yeah. of the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I could see that because when you came to Chesapeake a couple of times to have lunch with me, it, like everyone just stopped in. <laughs> <laughs> and then even I had a few of my friends like, hey, dude, who, who's that? How do you know him? But yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I felt special. I it, felt like someone rec recognized me too. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that not many people get to interact with us because there's so few of us. Yeah. There's, you know, there's, I think there's about 750 to 800 of us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when people see us, they're like, I know they want to come up and talk to us and ask us questions, but, yeah. and I don't mind talking to people. Yeah. You know, my, my wife always tells me, you can just talk to anybody. I, yeah. I never was like that. Yeah. I was really, you know, quiet, reserved, like to keep to myself, but you know, wearing this uniform, I'm representing. So. A true story. Yeah. If you look back at yourself, let's say 23 years ago, what advice would you give yourself? Get your education quicker. Mm. I waited too long. Hmm. I wish I would have finished. I think more doors would have opened earlier had I finished my bachelor's and my master's. Interesting. When I finished my bachelor's, I'm like, I am never going back to school. Uh, the, the VA paid, well, the veterans paid for my bachelor's degree. Yeah. And then when I got done, I got this notice saying that I had the post 9-11 GI Bill and, I, and it was going to expire in like 2017 or 18. And I told my wife, I said, man, I sure don't want to let this go to waste. She's like, well, could get another degree. I'm like, okay. So I got my master's. That's awesome. And what was crazy is at that time, right when I started my last class, my thesis, yeah. my daughter bought an older home in Choctaw. 
and we were remodeling it. And I would work all day, spend an hour on my thesis and go over there till about nine or 10 at night and remodel our house. So, I mean, just for the whole semester, I got through that thesis just and remodeling the house and working full time. It was, was not easy. Man. But yeah, that's how we're building this house now is just from buying and flipping houses and uh -huh. being smart with our money. Yeah. My wife's dad has always told us uh, for years, there's more to spending your money than making your money. Mm. Anybody can make money, but you got to be smart when it comes to spending it. That's true. So yeah. my wife is very money smart. Yeah. Very. That's awesome. Yeah. She's very good with the money. Yeah. My wife is a lot better than me. I, I like mean, to spend it. I do too. <laughs> Man, I, but we don't have any kids yet. So, yeah, I, unfortunately, sometimes I do go off on a binge. I buy all sorts of Tell shoes. You. I'm a shoe freak. <laughs> Amazon is ruining me. <laughs> <laughs> well, during the whole uh, COVID-19 thing, Amazon wasn't delivering the shoes they were delivering other things that oh, they man. deemed essential so yeah it i'm I, I guess it's made us lazy i'm like oh i need that i'm not going to the store i'm just gonna order online i'll be mm. here tomorrow yeah it's it's crazy yeah so when you the whole uh covid19 have you developed any different habits i sure wash my hands a heck of a lot more uh i've always kept hand sanitizer in my door, my patrol car. Yeah. And I mean, that was habit. Every time I make contact, I'd wash my hands. Mm -hmm. But now I have some in my office. And if I touch something that, you know, like some paperwork or something, I'll wash my hands. And, yeah. And I spend more time after using the restroom, soaping, washing longer than I used to. Yeah. So everybody, they say 20 seconds, but yeah. I'll, I'll spend that 20 seconds and use hot, hot water. And because I just, I don't know. I just, I guess I'm older, so I'm more susceptible of getting mm. what they're talking about. But yeah, I've been pretty fortunate and I don't really know anybody that's caught it. So yeah, no, it's really interesting because we're, we sanitize, we, we're pretty um, health conscientious anyways, but like our mics every time, even we've done this for two and a half years, just whenever we're done with mics, we always clean them up and yeah. all that. So that, that's nothing yeah. new. Uh, but for the habits, we, we started walking a lot more. We walk yeah. like five miles a day. Oh, that's good exercise. Yeah. And we got to hang out and just chat about life, about things and what we're excited about. That's and, cool. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. It's, we sanitize. We use, my daughter sells the essential oils. Yeah. And we use thieves to clean our whole house and we diffuse. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. I need to get in touch with her about some stuff. I'll give you her one of her cards. <laughs> she is doing very well man very very well that's awesome yeah you read a lot i do if you were to think about a chapter of a book and look at your life right now what would that chapter be hmm. that's a good question a chapter hmm wow <laughs> um that's the first one you stumped me on <laughs> hmm Man, I read a lot of uh, Jack Reacher books. Oh, yeah. I'm a um, big Lee Child fan. Uh, oh, man, that, that's a tough question. <laughs> we can come back to it. Yeah, because that's, yeah, I don't know. How about this? We'll break up the tough question with my question jar. Okay. So we're going to do three questions. You go and reach... And pull out one question and read it and answer it. Okay. And of course you took the one on top. <laughs> <laughs> what is the biggest risk you've ever taken? Whew. Biggest risk I've ever taken. I would have to say. Probably going to when I talked about that pursuit. Mm. Driving into oncoming traffic. Um, that has since been added to our policy to not go, go <laughs> pursued into oncoming traffic. It's dangerous. Uh, I mean, I, I, I saw it after the fact, but me not liking to lose, you know, I, was about, I wasn't going to give up. But mm. had I now flash forward, you know, 
how many years it's been, uh, probably 13 years. Yeah. Uh, no way. I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. I guess as we get older, we mature and life becomes a little bit more precious. Yeah. So yeah, that was probably one of the bigger risks I've taken. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next question for you. Okay, let me dig down deep here. <laughs> Let's see. Who is influential in your life? I would have to say, number one, God. Mm. Uh, just, you know, you got to depend on a faith. I mean, everybody has different faiths. Um, I don't think I would be where I'm at today without, you know, God in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up and had a pretty crazy, I was a hellion growing up. Uh, made the changes after I got married and had kids and uh, just that would have to be num number one. But um, we talked earlier about General Thompson. I think, man, that guy is such a leader. Uh, just I, just a man of integrity. I just I, I have the greatest amount of respect for that guy. Yeah. Uh, when I thought just how he ascended to the ranks and, mm -hmm. and where he's at now, I'm like, man, talk about a guy that has done it all. Uh, got a lot of respect. I mean, he's very influential. I mean, just wow. his character and the integrity that he carries with him. Yeah, pretty cool. Well, you both, I feel like, show have a lot of similarities. Highway Patrol, National Guard, mm -hmm. both military. Yeah. And both amazing family men. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Big difference in height, though. Be, yeah. <laughs> It's a giant. Yeah, I, mean, I told people to do their visual math when I sit next to him. Yeah. And I'm only 5'9". Yeah. Yeah, so like, man. Yeah. And what's funny is one of my partners uh, when we were in the Metro was the same height as him. And we'd stand on the side of the road and it was like a clown show. People would, <laughs> people would drive by and be like, because <laughs> I'm 5'6". Yeah. You know, just, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Good partner though. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. One more question. One more from question the, from the jar. All right, let's see what we got. <laughs> what is your earliest memory? Hmm. I think. Oh, my, the earliest memory that far back I can remember, that's vivid in my mind, is uh, I was probably about four or five years old, and we were going to my great grandparents' house. And when we got there, the house was filled with smoke and my great grandmother was dead in the kitchen. Kind of morbid, but that is how far back I can remember. I mean, wow, that's what, 48 years ago. Dang. Yeah, I, I to this day, I can see her laying on the floor. Yeah, oh, man. pretty crazy how stuff like that sticks with you. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you what I did yesterday, but I remember that. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. That was a pretty cool question. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. From four to five years old. Yeah. Man. You, earlier you talked about uh, PTSD mm -hmm. and, of course, veterans, military, law enforcement, just sometimes even regular citizens like myself suffer from it. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with it? Um, you have to talk about it. You have to find somebody that you can entrust to talk about your issues. I mean, my wife deals with mine. I mean, she hears, you know, my problems, sees my problems. Um, well, I'm a busy guy today. Yeah. Life of a trooper. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah. If you don't talk to somebody about it, it will eat you up inside. I mm -hmm. think that is one of the reasons why 22 veterans are taking their lives every day. Yeah. Um, they don't seek help. They're, they're embarrassed by it. Uh, they're too prideful. Um, you have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had an issue that happened to me in the military that I never worried about it until probably about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And cause it, it was in, I guess it really didn't bother me until somebody said, Hey, you got to take care of that issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I just never, I kept it all inside bottled up. Wow. You know, sooner or later you're, it's going to blow. Yeah. So, uh, some of the stuff that we've seen on the job here is traumatizing. Uh, 
bodies mangled, burnt flesh, uh, just body parts everywhere that we have to deal with. Uh, people, we get nightmares mm -hmm. and you just have to deal with it. Yeah. Do you have uh, some troopers come up to you and confide in you? And I've had some. Yeah. We've talked about it. You know, you, you have to. Sh I know a lot of troopers are like, oh, I'm not sharing my feelings and get all, you know, boo hoo and stuff. But mm. you got to talk about that stuff. Yeah. Uh, whether it be, you know, it's probably better in private. Yeah. Uh, sure. But, you know, a lot of times guys don't want to share that stuff. Yeah. And we do have an officer's assistance program, which is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, when guys have, you know, family issues or stuff like PTSD, that those guys are, they're, they're trained to deal with that stuff. Yeah. So, wow. That's, that's the stuff you don't see yeah. on live PD. You know, right. that some of the stuff that we come across that, I mean, we're human. I mean, I, I pray every day. I don't ever have to see a kid on the side of the road you know, dead or injured. I mean, I've had some in a car crashes and stuff and I, you know, I carry stuffed animals in my trunk and give it to them to kind of take their mind off the trauma because getting in a crash as a young kid is traumatizing. Mm. So, I mean, that is my biggest fear is to never, I hope I never have to, you know, go to a family member and say, you know, your child is, you know, dead. My first fatality was a 16 uh, year old girl and when we made the notification, I knew the dad. We served in the military together. He was an Oklahoma City officer. So that was, that was tough. Yeah. I mean, news like that's never easy, but man, when you know someone. Yeah, those notifications are terrible. They're not fun at all. That's, I'd have to say that's the worst part of our job is knocking on a door and saying, you know, your loved one's been killed in a crash. Because you have everything in your mind rehearsed when you walk up to the door. And as soon as the door opens, that family member knows bad news is coming. And that script just goes out the, out the window. You have to just come out with something. And you have to do it as painless as possible, you know. And the first thing they're going to ask you most of the time is, did they suffer? <sighs> and, of course, you're not going to say, oh, yeah, they were mangled and... You know, you just want to say, you know, because of their injuries, they didn't survive the crash. We don't like to say killed or dead, stuff like that. Right, right. So it's traumatizing. Yeah. And even for us to go in there, I've sat and sobbed with a family before. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not fun. Yeah. But it's, you know, one of those things, we, part of the job. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. You talk about, we're talking about death is, I, I remember one of my earliest memories is when my, I guess it would be my, I don't know how many generations of cousins, but they got killed in Oklahoma City, a uh, drunk driver hit them from behind mm. and pushed them into a, a train. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, the truck, I, I would imagine they probably down on impact, but it pushed them into the train. Mm. Yeah. So. That's terrible. Yeah. yeah. They ever catch the drunk driver? Uh, I think he passed away too. Mm. But I do remember um, Oklahoma City police coming up to my parents' door. And yeah. Delivering that news. And so. Yeah, you don't ever want to have to be on the other end of that. Mm -hmm. That's, I don't wish that on anybody because it's yeah. not fun. Yeah. Mm. Hey. All right. Well, man. <laughs> What are you most proud of? I would have to th say that I, I am a, a proud of how my kids have turned out. I mean, I couldn't ask for better kids. I mean, growing up, they were both well-behaved. Both of them graduated valedictorian in their class. Wow. Uh, my oldest daughter got her master's degree and is a full-time professor at Rose State and the essential oil business just got promoted to the platinum level. I mean, she's doing phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Youngest one just graduated Oklahoma City Police Academy. She's like, dad, I can't wait to go back to school. She's eight classes to get her bachelor's and she wow. wants to get her master's degree. Nice. So yeah, we've, we've been blessed with two great kids. I mean, I, sometimes I probably, people just need to tell me to shut up because I'm always talking about them. Yeah. 
But yeah, that's probably my greatest accomplishment. Not, not, it's not about me. It's about, you know, look at my two kids, mm. you know, they've done well. Yeah. Speaking of accomplishments, when was the last time you challenged yourself with doing something you've never done before? And then what was the outcome? Um, probably building my first house a couple years ago that people say, you know, you either finish the house and, or you end up getting divorced. Well, we did, that was the first house we built. Mm. We flipped them and everything. Uh, we never argued one time. We agree on everything. Wow. House building. Now we argue with other stuff. Yeah. You know, we kind of butt heads, but, um, when we built that house, we just would go into a place and pick out, you know, colors and brick and, and you know, everything and be like, yeah, that, that works. And it's the same with this house. This house is taking a little bit longer. Yeah. We're almost a year in. Yeah. Uh, but, and I told her, I said, if you want to do this again, you're doing it on your own. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. But that was a big challenge. I was always afraid to take that step and build a house. Mm -hmm. And after we did it that time and we found this land that we're on four acres, in Midwest City, which is hard to find, yeah. uh, we said we decided let's just do this one more time, and this will be it. Okay, but it, it's it's tough dealing with contractors that say they're going to be there and they don't show up. And but we're getting through it. We're about two and a half weeks out, and I mean it. it that was, that's a challenge, and especially dealing with the high costs of everything. The prices have gone up in those two and a half years since we built last time. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, the well's running dry. <laughs> but that, that's a challenge yeah. to build a house. Yeah. And, it, and you can never build a perfect house, no matter how much money you have. Yeah. Um, but we have done, <laughs> you know, we did went a little bit overboard this time. We're supposed to be downsizing because our kids don't live at home anymore. Yeah, yeah. And we're, we're done. We built a bigger house. <laughs> we built a cabana. <laughs> Uh, the, my mother-in-law is going to move into. She's That's cool. older, okay. So uh, you know she's going to live right there in the backyard. You know, so pretty cool. We I built, think that's really cool, actually. Yeah, built the pool, so man. Yeah. So yeah, we'll be set. Yeah, and then my, and then my daughter is moving into the house that we're living in, which is right next door. Yeah. So we're going to have a little compound. Dude, that's the ultimate yeah. setup. Yeah. It's like what I'm arguing about. That's like we want acreage so we can build for our parents to be close and then if you know we, when we have kids and yep. they want to be close here that'd be cool what is cool is the heat and air guy said hey do you have the plan to that cabana he's like i want to build a cabana to put my my mom and dad in and mm. I, I sent it to him wow yeah I had an architect draw it up for me so how um, big is it like a it's, thousand square it's feet? it's two it's a two-car garage and okay. then 660 living Oh, wow. It's got a little, you know, a uh, bar mm -hmm. uh, for a kitchen area. No stove, just microwave. Yeah. A uh, living room, a bedroom with a closet, and then a sh walk-in shower, a uh, sink and a stool, and then we did a stackable washer and dryer in there. Ooh, nice. So, yeah, when, when it's done, we'll have you over. And oh, man. Give you the grand tour. We'd love it. Yeah. Yeah. Are yeah. you going to grill, too? Lo do what? Are you going to grill? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Good. Absolutely. Count us in. I just made some ribs Sunday. They oh, were, man. They were awesome. Thank God for Costco because <laughs> I couldn't find anything to say. <laughs> That's so true. I went to see this <clears> yesterday yeah. and yeah. they had like no meats. Costco was full. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we spent a lot of money in Costco. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Can't take it with you. That's true. That's true. <laughs> How do you want to be remembered? Uh, did I, uh, I played by the rules, uh, you know, I wasn't just just a good guy. Mm. And just, he was a good guy. That's what I wish that people would say about me. I was honorable, uh, loved my country, uh, loved my family. I, just, I, I, just, I want to be known that I didn't make enemies. I don't, I don't burn bridges, you know, just, I think uh, my honor and integrity is important. Mm -hmm. I just, I want to be known for that. That's awesome. Yeah, I did everything right, try to. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. That's true. So I've known you for about eight to nine months now, and I could say that's how I would remember you. I appreciate that. Honestly. Yeah. I get excited just even sending you a text just to say hi. It's oh, like, man. You know, I, I and, feel connected with you. Yeah. You know, I was always raised to treat everybody the same, you know, whether it be 
the cleaning lady in the building to the chief. You yeah. know, treat them all with respect. Yeah. You know, I, I talk to them all the time. Yeah. You know, you got to just be nice to everybody. It's, yeah. The world is full of hate. Mm -hmm. And we just, like your wife said, we need to bring kindness back. Yeah. You know? That's true. Man, I love it. And I resonate with that because my parents, when they came over here from uh, Vietnam, they uh, they had clean offices and they had to mow yards. And But the, the whole thing about that is the people they were cleaning for were so amazing to them. Uh -huh. That means a lot. Yeah. That, that's what keeps them people. Yeah. Keep your employees, you take care of them. Yeah, and it, it was just so brilliant. And I'll share this story with you is a few months ago, late last year, there's a gentleman that he uh, works at Chesapeake with me and he ma uh, maintains and cleans the locker room and some of the other buildings. And so I befriended him and I saw his shoes and noticed, and I was like, man, he probably needs some new shoes. So I asked him what size he wears, about nine, nine and a half. He's like, yeah. So I, I had like, shoe, I'm a shoe freak. So I brought him all these shoes, brought him some clothes. I, I That's awesome. Wear. And it's it's been an amazing relationship. That's cool. He has a son that's graduating. I'd like to hook him up with you because he talks about going to law enforcement or the National Guard. Yeah. And I was like, man, I know a guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Send him my way. I will. We need good people. I will. We're always recruiting. Yeah. And uh, so he's. we sat down. I sat down with him a few months ago, right before the whole COVID-19 hit, and told him that we would sit down and talk, that I would uh, introduce his son to some really good people. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Anytime. Yeah, for sure. I'm all for that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time, oh, Lieutenant. My pleasure. And your friendship. It's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Two more questions. Go. One of the questions. Look in the camera. Lieutenant, do you approve this podcast? Absolutely. <laughs> and then how do we get in touch with you? No phone number, but just like email or you're on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Yeah. OHP Lieutenant Lacerdo. Yeah. L-O-S-U-R-D-O. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I can give my email, my, my work email. Yeah. It's work related. It's richard.lacerto at dps.ok.gov. I like it. My name is Wong Lam, and I definitely approve this podcast, Lieutenant. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for the gift, sir. Thank I appreciate you. it all. Likewise. This is great. Great. This is really, really good. Good time.